We've previously covered how to calculate what's called the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix. Denoted like this, or this, it's simply AD minus BC. We think of it like the difference of the products of the diagonals. We also saw how the inverse of an invertible 2x2 two two matrix involves the determinant. In this video, we'll go over the cofactor definition of the determinant for a square matrix of any size. And in doing so, we take a significant step towards finding the general formula for the inverse of an invertible matrix. Also, we'll define the determinant of a single entry to just be that single entry. Okay, let's talk about what minors and cofactors are, and then we'll see the definition of the determinant. If A is a square matrix, then the minor of entry AIJ is denoted by MIJ and is defined to be the determinant of the submatrix that remains after row I and column J are deleted from A. So you can see this thing called a minor is defined based on determinants of smaller matrices. This is going to lead into our recursive cofactor definition of the determinant. That's why it's important that we know what the determinant of a single entry is. Then, negative 1 to the i plus j times the minor, mij, is denoted cij, and this is called the cofactor of entry aij. These cofactors will be used in our definition of the determinant. To make sure we understand this definition, let's find the cofactors of this 2x2 two two matrix, beginning with the cofactor of the entry in the first row and first column. Like the definition says, we eliminate that row and column, and then we will take the determinant of the remaining submatrix. The determinant of a single entry, in this case 8, is just 8. That is the minor of this first entry, 5. We want the cofactor, so we have to multiply the minor by negative 1 to the i plus j. In this case, that's negative 1 to the 1 plus 1. In this case, since the row and column numbers have an even sum, 1 plus 1, which is 2, this negative 1 factor is just going to go away, and the cofactor is 8. What if we did the cofactor for row 1, column 2? Then again, we eliminate the row, we eliminate the column. This is the cofactor of that entry 6. Then we take the determinant of the remaining submatrix, which in this case is just a single entry, so 4, and then to get the cofactor, because this is just the minor, but to get the cofactor, we multiply by negative 1 to the power of the row number plus the column number, 1 plus 2. That's that right there, negative 1 to the i plus j. In this case, since the row and column number have an odd sum, 3, the negative 1 will be here, and so we'll just have negative 4. Try calculating the other two cofactors of this 2x2 two two matrix. You can pause the video. I'm going to go over it now. The cofactor of row 2, column 1, we eliminate that row, eliminate that column. The determinant of the remaining submatrix is 6. The row and column have an odd sum, so it's going to be negative 6. And then the cofactor in row 2, column 2, eliminate the row, eliminate the column. The determinant of the remaining submatrix is 5. The row and column number have an even sum, 4, so there is no negative, it's just 5. Those are the cofactors of this 2x2 two two matrix. Now that we understand the definition of a cofactor, we can introduce the general definition of the determinant. Here it is, the cofactor definition of the determinant for a square matrix of any size. If A is an n by n matrix, then the number obtained by multiplying the entries in any row or column by their corresponding cofactors and adding the resulting products is called the determinant of A, denoted det A. So this is what the formulas for the determinant would look like. We could do a cofactor expansion along row I, in which case you see those entries, AI1, AI2, up through AIN. We're taking the entries as we move along the row, and in each case, the entry is multiplied by its corresponding cofactor, CI1, CI2, and so on. But interestingly, not only could we do this on any row, we could also do it along any column, which we see here. This is a cofactor expansion along column J. We have A1J, 
A to J up through A and J. We are moving down the rows while staying in the same column, and at each step, the entry is multiplied by its corresponding cofactor. And it turns out you're going to get the same exact number for the determinant, no matter which row or which column you choose. Generally speaking, this is not the most efficient way to calculate determinants, but for smaller matrices, it's a pretty easy way to do it by hand. Now before we apply this definition to find the determinant of a 3x3 matrix, let's go back up and apply it quickly to this 2x2 matrix, since we already calculated all of its cofactors anyways. The determinant, of course, can be denoted like this. It looks just like a matrix, but it's just straight lines on the sides. The determinant of this matrix, if we calculate it with a cofactor expansion, we could use any row or column we please. Let's say we do a cofactor expansion across the first row of the matrix. Then we would take this entry, 5, the first entry in the row, and multiply it by its corresponding cofactor, which we already found to be 8. Then we would add the next entry in the row, 6, multiplied by its corresponding cofactor, which is negative 4. This adds up to 40 minus 24, or 16, which would agree with what we get if we just use our familiar method of calculating the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix, just the differences of the products along the diagonals. 5 times 8 minus 6 times 4, that's 40 minus 24, exactly as we see here. And yes, we could have also done this along a column. Suppose we did the cofactor expansion along column 2. Well then, we would start with the first entry of column 2, which is 6, and then multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which is C12. That's negative 4. Then we would add the next entry in the column, which is 8, multiplied by its corresponding cofactor, which is 5. This time we have negative 24 plus 40, which again is 16. No matter which row or column you do the cofactor expansion along, you're going to get the same value for the determinant. All right, let's finish by using our new definition to find the determinant of this 3x3 three three matrix A. So this is det A, which we could also denote like this. Let's go ahead and find the determinant. We could use a cofactor expansion along any row or any column that we please, but there is a good choice. We should use either row one or column two. That way we have this zero, which is going to reduce the amount of computation required. So let's go ahead and do a cofactor expansion along row one, and then as a last bit of practice, we'll do the cofactor expansion along column two, and we'll see that they are equal. For the cofactor expansion along the first row, we begin with the first entry in the row, which is 2. Then we have to multiply by the corresponding cofactor. The cofactor begins with negative 1 to the power of the row number plus the column number, 1 plus 1. So in this case, the negative is just going to go away because it's negative 1 to the power of 2. But just for completeness, I'm going to leave it there so we can see all the pieces that are in this formula. We then multiply by, by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when the row and column of the entry in question are deleted. So that's the determinant of this submatrix. We then move on to the next entry in the row, which is 0. So plus 0 multiplied by its corresponding cofactor, which begins with negative 1 to the power of the row number plus the column number. In this case, the negative would stick around because it's a negative 1 to an odd power, although in the end this whole thing's going to be 0 anyways. Notice the negatives alternate. The negative was cancelled out in the first term, so it's going to be present in the second term, it's going to cancel out in the next term, and so on, because the row number plus the column number will alternate between even and odd. Then we also have to multiply this by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when this entry's row and column are deleted. So that's 4, 3, negative 1, negative 2. So there's the determinant of that submatrix. Then we move on to the last entry, which is 1. So we have plus 1 multiplied by its cofactor, which begins with negative 1 to the power of the row number plus the column number. So 1 plus 3, and then multiply by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when this entry's row and column are deleted. So the determinant of that there. 
and there the determinant is. All right, so that is our full expression for the determinant of the matrix using the cofactor expansion along row one. Let's evaluate this by evaluating the determinants of these two by two matrices. That's just the difference of the products along the diagonals. So we're gonna have two times negative one to the two, which is just two, and then multiply by this determinant. Negative three times negative two is positive six, and then negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. So subtract negative 5, which is the same as adding 5. The next term is just 0. And then the last term is 1 times negative 1 to the 4, so just 1, multiplied by the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. 4 times 5 is 20. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. So this will be 20 minus negative 9, so 20 plus 9. This then is 2 times 11, which is 22, plus 1 times 29, which is 29. And so the determinant of this matrix is 51. So that's how to find the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix using a cofactor expansion along the first row. I'm going to put all this work over here to the side, and we'll calculate the determinant again using a cofactor expansion along the second column. I encourage you to pause the video and give that a try yourself. All right, let me walk you through it. We begin with the first entry of this column, which is zero. Multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which begins with negative one to the power of the row number plus the column number. In this case, that sum is odd, so this negative will actually stick around, but the next term won't have the negative, and the last term will have the negative. It just alternates. But then we also have to multiply by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when zero's row and column are deleted. So that's the determinant of 4, negative 1, 3, negative 2. Next, we have the second entry in the column, so negative 3 multiplied by its cofactor, which begins with negative one to the power of the row number plus the column number, multiplied by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when negative three's row and column are deleted. So that's going to be the determinant of two, one, three, negative two. Finally, I'll move this over to the left so we have enough room to fit this. We have the last entry in the column, which is five, so plus five, multiplied by its cofactor, which begins with negative one to the power of the row number plus the column number, multiplied by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when five's row and column are deleted. So the determinant of this matrix, two, one, four, negative one. All right, now we can finish this computation by calculating the determinants of these two by two matrices. The first term, of course, is just zero because of this zero here. Then we have negative 3 multiplied by negative 1 to the 2 plus 2, so that's just negative 3. And then the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, 1 times 3 is 3, so this is negative 4 minus 3. And then we must have the 5 times negative 1 to the 3 plus 2, that's negative 5, so I'll just write negative 5, multiplied by the determinant of this matrix, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and then four times one is four, so negative two minus four. Finishing this calculation, we have negative three multiplied by negative seven, which is positive 21, and then negative five times negative six, which is positive 30, so plus 30. And again, we get that determinant of 51. And that's how to find the determinant of any square matrix using the cofactor definition. Of course, for larger matrices, this definition becomes quite time-consuming indeed. All of these places where we evaluated 2 by 2 matrices, if this was 4 by 4, we would be evaluating 3 by 3 matrices at that step. That would be a pain. This is a lot of work to do by hand, but that's how you do it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. There's also a link in the description to my video going over some more practice problems of finding minors, cofactors, and determinants. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together, like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.